What is going on everybody? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. Today we are talking about five narratives that exist that are just not true after watching the Raiders tape. But I want to talk about some of the things, man. Yesterday's game was interesting. The Raiders lost. We lost by five points. And really, the game was much closer than I think people realize. And there's a reason for that. Now, first and foremost, is jumping right into the very first thing that I want to talk about is the Raiders offensive line. There's a, a narrative on social media that the offensive line for the Raiders did not play good. And that is not true at all. In fact, the Raiders offensive play, line played really good, in my opinion. Keep in mind, there's 45 total snaps that you have to watch. Not two, not three, not four. 45 snaps in total. In fact, most of the snaps, the Raiders offensive line did their job. They kept Derek Carr clean. Was there a guy that maybe got a little close to Carr? Of course. That happens on every single uh, team. Regardless, you have a superstar offense line or if you don't, that happens. And truth be told, Derek Carr wasn't nearly as much pressured as, as the narrative is out there. People are saying Derek Carr was pressured nonstop, and that's actually not true. In fact, uh, Derek Carr was sacked five times yesterday, and two of the five uh, sacks According to Pro Football Focus, I, I don't necessarily agree with it. Uh, I do agree with one of them. Uh, they said that Josh Jacobs gave up one sack, which was the first sack he absolutely did. We talked about this in yesterday's video. And the other one they said was, was on Darren Waller. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but um, Pro Football Focus doesn't blame the offense line for all five of those sacks. In fact, they only put two of those five sacks on the offensive line. The other three went elsewhere, right? Uh, the one sack that they that I do agree with is the one that Colton Miller allowed, which was on the final play of the game. Um, but the one sack I don't agree with is the Jermaine Illuminor sack, which I think was the second sack of the game. Uh, this was the one where Colton Miller uh, pushed him. I'm sorry, this is the one that Khalil Mack pushed Jermaine Illuminor right into the quarterback. Derek Carr, in my opinion, just stood there. Uh, there were a there was a lane for Derek Carr to step up and get out of the pocket in my opinion Derek Carr obviously was not able to do that and although Illuminor technically gave up the sack you can make the argument that that was not on the offensive line either way the narrative that the offensive line did not play well is false in my opinion and you guys can watch the tape if you guys need it you guys hit me up on Twitter I'll get it for you guys um, Jermaine Illuminor Andre James Colton Miller, John Simpson, as well as Lester Cotton mixed in with some of the other guys that were there. Uh, all did a pretty decent job. Now, I will say this. Uh, John Simpson did give up some some pressure, right, from the interior. Uh, he lost a couple of reps. Uh, I think overall, Colton Miller did a pretty good job. Um, but I, I would say Andre James had the best game last night. You know, there's there there are these people, right, on, on social media, on in the YouTube comments. Anytime I mention Andre James, and James had actually a great game yesterday. So shout out to Andre James. Uh, you know, I'm not, I, I, and jumping into the second narrative, right? Uh, I don't think Derek Carr had that bad of a game either. Uh, and, and hear me out on this one, right? Uh, some of the sacks you can credit to Derek Carr, for sure. Uh, Derek Carr had three interceptions but all of his interceptions came because of the same exact thing which was all three of those passes were underthrown the first pass to uh, that was thrown to Darren Waller was underthrown right and uh, Tranquil the linebacker intercepted it the second one to Devontae Adams Adams had a step it was underthrown in fact even Darren Waller had a step right the safeties were split the linebacker was running right through the middle and if Derek Carr threw the ball further, Darren Waller could have ran underneath it and ran it for a touchdown. The Devontae Adams interceptions. Adam ha had at least four yards. If Carr put it in the back of the end zone, it's a touchdown. Hunter Renfro. Obviously, that was more of a check, check down for maybe two or three yards, but that was behind uh, Hunter Renfro. And even on the first drive of the game, the Darren Waller running the crossing pattern in which Derek Carr underthrew it, that was a touchdown too. And obviously, all four of those plays were under throws by Derek Carr. And here's the thing. I think the under throws could kind of be attributed to the fact that the Raiders didn't play in the preseason. You can almost blame the coach for that. In my opinion, I think this is why you should have absolutely, you should have, in my opinion, you should have played the starters. If you're Josh McDaniels, you should have had Darren, Derek Carr go out there and had Darren Waller line up and had Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro. 
because then these underthrows, these issues, the slow offensive start, that all gets knocked out and thrown out the window. Three points in the first half was all that we had on the offense side of the ball. And that's not Derek Carr's fault necessarily, right? He made the right reads. There was a third and two play in which we ran a draw play. And John Simpson didn't make his block. And the running back got blown up behind the line of scrimmage. And we punt the football. That wasn't Derek Carr's fault. He made the right decision because the Chargers only had three defensive linemen on the field uh, at that time, right? They were, they were in a super soft front. And Derek Carr made the right check. Uh, so I wouldn't say Derek Carr made the wrong play. It just didn't work out. Uh, Derek Carr, on some of his throws, weren't the wrong reads. The reads were correct, right? So the first thing I'm saying in the narrative is the offense line played pretty good. And the second thing I'm saying is Derek Carr didn't play that bad either. I think both units played pretty well. Uh, obviously, it was a mistake-filled game. That can't happen, and that won't happen next week. I think the Raiders are going to play much better against the Cardinals. Plus, the Chargers are an elite team. We've been talking about this for over a week now. The Chargers' defensive line is better than the Raiders. The Chargers' offensive line is better than the Raiders. Uh, you can make an argument that the Raiders' uh, entire defense is not as good as the Chargers' entire defense, and you would not be wrong. Kenneth Murray looked good last night. I saw one play blew up Dylan Parham and then blew up Josh Jacobs. Right, and that's a first round linebacker that if he takes the next step is just like the sixth superstar on the Chargers defense. Either way, I think the Raiders will step up next week, jumping forward into the third narrative. People are saying, Where the hell is Max Crosby? He had no sacks, and people are like, Max Crosby has disappeared. But the truth is, is Max Crosby looked great last night. I get it. He did not have any sacks, none of his pressures, none of his quarterback hits. None of his hurries, none of that stuff converted into a sack. But guess what? That's all right. Those plays that Crosby had still forced incompletions. Those plays in which Crosby won his block, they still forced the quarterback to get off of his spot. The Raiders gave up all but seven points in the second half because of guys like Crosby. Guys like Nate Hobbs and Jonathan Abram were flying around. But Max Crosby actually had a really good game. And I get it. No sacks. But he still hit the quarterback a, a couple of times he had a couple of pressures and he was dominant against the run eight run stops according to pro football focus by max crosby the guy looked really good last night and i think anyone that thinks that max crosby disappeared or he's not that good or this or that it could not be more false in my opinion the fourth narrative that i think and this isn't a narrative that is out there um maybe people don't realize it but the raiders secondary was top freaking tier keep in mind we are playing justin herbert top seven quarterback most people agree with that most people who are honest definitely agree with that but the raiders secondary actually did a good job they made it tough on the the chargers offense to have success again only seven points in the second half on top of that Derek carr's first interception to uh to the linebacker allowed the Chargers to get the ball at like the 40-yard line. They only had to go 40 yards to score, and they did score. They scored a touchdown, all right? Um, so it's not like the Raiders did a terrible job in the secondary, right? You take away the points that they scored off the turnovers, and the Raiders did a great job uh, defensively, right? They technically would have only given up, uh, I believe, 14 points. Um, you know, they had 24. You can argue 10 came off the turnovers. One was a field goal. Obviously, the touchdown before the halftime in which Derek Carr threw the interception. Either way, I think the secondary did a great job, but getting a little bit more deeper into it, Nate Hobbs, man, is the real freaking deal. Uh, 33 coverage sacks or snaps. He had only given up one catch in the entire night. Um, and he had the third and three play in which the Raiders needed a stop to get the offense the ball back. Like the Raiders had the ball with the opportunity to win. And I think people may forget that. Like we could have won last night's game. Could have easily happened. Obviously, it didn't. It's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to play the Chargers again in the future. And, you know, losing by five points isn't really a big deal, right? I think the Raiders will step up. Uh, but even more than Nate Hobbs, Jordan Harmon and Rocky Sin did a great job. Jonathan Abram was freaking out of his mind last night. He had a bunch of key plays in which there were tackles, in, in which they forced punts. They were, you know, he was running underneath or he was running to a guy and Justin Herbert held on to the ball just a little bit longer because of it. All right, Jonathan Abram, the secondary in general, did a great job. And I think that goes to the fifth point I want to make in this video, which is that Patrick Graham's scheme is the real freaking deal. 
Patrick Graham knows what he's doing, and it is clear, man. You know, I was talking to a, a guy who's who's done some scouting work uh, for college and NFL in the past, and talking to this guy, this guy says that he thinks Patrick Graham is the best defensive coach in the entire league uh, from a schematic perspective. This guy designs plays in a way in which it allows him to have success and allows even then guys that may not be that good to have success because he knows when to blitz. He knows when to uh, run a stunt or, you know, guys uh, uh, crash hard and you got bring a guy off the side. Uh, Patrick Graham knows how to do certain things and he's just really, really good at designing defenses and the tape back setup. Patrick Graham is the real deal. Keep in mind, we're playing a top five likely team, right? The Chargers are one of the best teams in the, in the league and the Raiders had a ton of success. Big shout out to Patrick Graham. Hopefully Josh McDaniels in next week's game can match that. You know, hopefully Josh McDaniels steps up because I think the offense in general wasn't that great. Blame a bunch of different things, uh, but you can also put the equal amount of blame on Josh McDaniels. And I know McDaniels is a great coach, so this week against the Cardinals, we'll see just that. At the same time, Patrick Graham has a big, 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 big matchup, and he's going to have to figure out a way to contain Kyler Murray. Guys quick, guys fast. So this next week's going to be very interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about the five narratives that we discussed in this video. Comment below, thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.